If you've been on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, or any social media at all, you've probably heard of this sound effect. Michael, don't leave me here. Michael, Michael, help me. This single sound gained so much attention within not only the FNAF community, but the mainstream due to the potential of the single audio. But wait, how did we get here? To answer that question, we had to go back in time. Six whole years. This is going to be the quick history of the disturbing art of FNAF VHS tapes. Searching up the most viewed FNAF animations reveals some of the most watched gaining millions of views, but they didn't really try creating a story. It was just some videos trying to be funny, animations for extremely popular songs, quite a lot of the more popular ones were just based on music, and just montages as well. In the midst of all the fun humorous adventures of the FNAF crew and hundreds of song covers was one YouTube channel that wanted to do more. Junior0437 created their first FNAF animation on November 14th, 2015, simply called the Fazbear Band, with the animation actually being pretty decent with the sound design being amazing as well. At first, this seemed to be just a normal animation with Bonnie's voice box malfunctioning, but things quickly change. Is everybody having a good time? Because I sure know that I am. I could use some more, more, more poke me, more pizza. There's plenty of delicious pe 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 people, delicious pizza when you're at Freddy's Pizza Chica. You can't live off pizza all the time, Freddy. <laughs> You can't. Although this didn't really develop into a more comprehensive story since this was just an unfinished animation that only garnered about 100,000 views. Now don't get me wrong, 100,000 views is not a small number at all, but compared to what was coming up, this seems like nothing. Their other animations would amass even more views, basing their favorite kinds of topics around FNAF, Undertale, and even Godzilla. However, the one that's the most interesting to me was this Christmas show tape. Technically not considered a VHS tape, this still opened the path to a much more creative design choice of using a camera to express a story, with flashing messages and clips to give the feeling that someone spliced different kinds of footage into one tape. This was pretty smart to do since without the camera, it wouldn't really feel that grounded in reality. Though we are talking about animatronics possessed by children who were William Afton, so at least it's trying to add some realism to this universe. I can't play any of it with sound since it sings a song that will probably be copyrighted, but I do highly recommend watching this if you do have the chance. This video would gain some views, 2.1 million. And over the years, more of these tape style animations would pop up, such as Foxy's show tape, Fred Bear Family's Dinah's birthday night, but the one I want to focus on right now is Halloween Party show tape, Foxy 1992. In my opinion, this is probably the strongest video with how unexpected the scary bits came in. You just hear Foxy singing only to have. <laughs> The reason I want to focus on this tape specifically is that it's the earliest example of an actual FNAF VHS tape style video to ever gain this much attention. Yes, there were other videos not only on this channel, but other channels as well that had video recorded FNAF animations. However, this is the first official one that I could find that not only captured the VHS aesthetic perfectly and went viral. The others were just too clean to really be called VHS tapes, in my opinion. The purposeful, grainy feeling of the video just adds to how unsettling it is with how the slight distortion makes it feel almost like it's a real-life old video. Even making you fall for a false sense of security since we're just supposed to be watching Foxy singing on stage, only to be interrupted by this unexpected error. Like I said, this video really felt like the strongest example of this kind of style within this channel since the others couldn't really recapture the same feeling except for the last two videos. December 21st, 2018. Three years since the first animation and the quality has improved quite a bit, which only reflects with how unsettling this felt.
almost as if we change perspectives from a child watching their favorite character singing, to the night guard being hunted down, to finally, most likely the final moments of one of the children who were possessing one of the suits, even hinting it to be either Foxy or Golden Freddy with how long these two stay on screen. Like I said, most FNAF animations were made to be quirky and funny, admittedly probably for a much more child-based audience since there are quite a few children who did enjoy FNAF. I would know since I was once young in 2015. However, these specific videos didn't try to appeal only to a child audience, instead appealing to the FNAF community as a whole, which is why I believe it was so effective. This is when we finally get to the video that was made only 3 weeks ago from the time of writing the script. And yes, the creator of this channel left for a whole 4 years, which definitely shows a much more improved knowledge on how to create fear with animation. The worst part about this, honestly, is how low the views are. With a channel of nearly 200,000 subscribers, it's kind of a shame though expected due to the massive hiatus the creator took. Although they did a massive whopping 65 million views throughout the lifetime of their channel, I didn't really hear a lot of discussion about Junior0437. Though this could be due to multiple reasons. For one, the name isn't catchy, no offense, and not that memorable. The FNAF animations were impressive but didn't have a linear story to follow and seemed to just be one-off animations that didn't really connect to each other. Now, even though they may have not been completely remembered or talked about within the FNAF community to this day, I still view this channel to be a pioneer within the FNAF VHS style animations that grew to massive popularity over the years. Squimpus McGrimpus, <laughs> I don't know why they chose that name of all things, and Baddington. These two are most likely the names that pop up in your head if I say the words FNAF VHS, and for good reason. First, let's talk about Squimpus McGrimpus, who on November 12th, 2016, would upload their first video on YouTube. At least, to my knowledge. I am unsure if they actually deleted any of their earlier works. Who's there? A skeleton. That was it. A 5 second clip of a weird robot thing talking to a purple skeleton? I am also unsure if this video went viral before or after the FNAF series since a lot of the comments would be related to the FNAF VHS tapes that we will be discussing. As much as I would love to dissect the moral, philosophical meaning of whatever this was, it's probably better to move on to the first official FNAF VHS tape. Welcome to the Fazbear Entertainment's Maintenance Video Manual. This tape will cover the instructions on how to clean out your state of the art animatronic characters. Each animatronic has the same cleaning procedure. Now, if you love analog horror like I do, then this kind of video style is much more of the traditional kind of videos within this genre. I love how it combinates two of my favorite things into one creepy little package. The best parts of horror, to me at least, aren't jump scares, but instead things that allow the viewer's imagination to run wild. For example, within this tape, this happens near the end. Finally, take the torso piece and lift it upward until it is completely removed. Climb inside the torso and accept your death. Which reveals some ketchup and what I'm assuming a child that was William Afton. I'll be honest, the body of a child would have been probably less scary than its black bar since it lets us choose to think how torn up they would have been. Are they in pieces? Maybe it's just the head. How squished were they within this animatronic suit? Are they even recognizable visually? This is the kind of horror they live for. The first video, not whatever this thing was, chose to create something that was just unsettling for the sake of being creepy. Not really having much story significance. However, things change with the introduction of the Bonnie Joint movement testing video.
This video shows the various parts of the animatronic twitching and moving around. However, when it gets to the jaw, Bonnie will disappear leading to the camera pointing to a dark room, with shots of Bonnie appearing in various different areas of that room before leading to... Ending the video with the puppet. However, if you slow it down extremely, and I mean extremely since this all happens within half a second, an animatronic will pop out of the box in order to attack whoever is there. I believe this looks like Freddy or even Golden Freddy, but I'm not too sure. Sound response check is now Chica's video which tests her audio recognition. If she responds correctly, she would be looking in a direction of that sound. Around halfway in the video, the text is messed up leading to Chica looking directly at us, with the yellow text appearing. It seems as if these are Chica's thoughts. The music playing makes her happy, with her describing a bird sleeping in the snow as a bad dream. For some reason, she herself feels as if she's sleeping in snow, unable to get up due to her being too cold, unable to breathe. Out of all the VHS tapes so far, this one has to be the most saddening as not a lot of FNAF media, whether it's animations, fan games, or anything related to FNAF at all, really explores how the children feel. In all honesty, the dead children seem to be just accessories for the plot, forgetting that the animatronics are possessed, yes, however inside, a children unable to escape. Chica saying birds can't breathe when they are asleep in snow reflects that she actually doesn't know how to breathe anymore. She's literally a child forced within a machine. Of course, this is much more than horror. This is supposed to be a tragedy, with the final scene with her having a child slowly fading into the frame as she once again expresses, She can't breathe. I really wish more FNAF media did something similar to this as, like I said, most tried to focus on the killer's perspective or the players. Having the child be the focus can strengthen your story to go further beyond. With this being the real introduction of when these videos change from something to be quick creepy bits of animation to its own relative story. Now, Pirate's Cove pre-show was age-restricted, and maybe this video will be too for showing bits of it, so who knows. Hopefully not. This video starts off with an adorable animation of Foxy. Shiver me timbers! Three minutes! I better see some crew over at the curtain, or I'ma toss Freddy and his merry band in Davy Jones' locker. Or worse. This repeats until the animation freezes and four children's silhouettes appear, with one disappearing as this audio starts playing. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Something is within this tape that this place doesn't want us to see as the other children also start disappearing. I thought you wanted an audio. I thought you wanted an audience, Foxy, before the go 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 is flashed on screen most likely referencing the Go 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 minigame from FNAF 2. This is heavy in the speculation territory, but the child within Foxy most likely wants to see the animatronic playing backstage, which is how William Afton lured them into the secluded area. Now, the last part is something I can't show. It's hard to see, but it appears to be some animatronic hanging in front of Foxy. 
within a dark room. That is what I believe is being shown, with the last scene being of Golden Freddy malfunctioning until... They stop. The audience that William could be referring to is how the child within Golden Freddy was actually Afton in front of Foxy animatronic, unable to do anything to stop him, except just watch. Unable to look away as they are frozen in place without the ability to close their eyes, much less even blink. Which is why there's a short clip of him staring in the distance before switching to the Golden Freddy hanging on a purple rope, and once again Foxy staring straight at Golden Freddy being strangled. With this purple rope most likely signifying William Afton's hands at that moment. I'm playing it safe so if you wish to watch this for yourself, I highly recommend it, though it could be extremely distressing to watch to some viewers. As well as some information that I will state later about the creator that could change your mind so stick around until the end. It feels weird to call the Finance of Freddy series being a bunch of kid friendly games since if you really look under the surface or just play through the mini games, the story is very direct with what it's trying to say. A serial unaliver unaliving some children which go on to possess animatronic suits. This isn't some kid friendly lore, however with the presentation of the games and the lack of actual on screen violence, a lot of the entries within the series has cemented itself to be quite child friendly. These 8 bit minigames just show some red spots on the ground so they don't really constitute adult content compared to the other media out there. That is why I genuinely love when a series such as this takes the core concepts of FNAF and makes it much darker. Make it genuinely horrifying. Now there was a pattern to these videos so far, each one trying to focus on an animatronic from the original cast, though it did add some extra characters like the puppet in Golden Freddy. Non-existent video is where we really get to see what a series has in store for us. Starting off, it's a promotional tape to the Fazbear Diner, the first in-game location ever created. Explain the concept of the Springlock suits in quite a lot of detail. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits or in the background. This is undoubtedly Fredbear, not Golden Freddy, as they have ketchup filled their mouths only to show Golden Freddy later on, implying that they're the one within his universe to have Afton the phone guy from the very first game. Now with these two suits being presented back to back, I believe this is trying to argue that Golden Freddy and Fredbear are the same exact suit, which is something that is heavily debated within the community. Going forward, we find out that there were four tapes hidden with the animatronic heads, which were the four videos I just explained. Foxy ripped apart with a smile, Bonnie dancing in the dark, Chica with her happy song, and finally Foxy meets a happy man, with us directly being gifted the final tape. Most likely found within Golden Freddy's head since he appears for a second before disappearing. Before your brother died, something else happened in that place. Something was wrong with those suits. The secret is that the thing we just watched was a springlock failure, with the puppet wanting us to find our father. We are Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, ignorant of what our father has done, which will lead us to Fazbear Frights, the place that FNAF 3 took place in, telling us to get a gas canister in the back in order to set the building on fire, in order to finish off our own father. Knowing that Springtrap, a monster unrecognizable, is undoubtedly our dad. Trying to calm Michael down and letting him know this is how they'll be free, finally. The children's souls, the puppet, Michael himself, and even his younger brother. The younger brother he put within Fredbear's mouth, causing the bite of 83. <laughs> the guilt of causing that to happen to your own little brother, it was supposed to be a harmless prank which he still hasn't forgiven himself for. 
But this could be something that could give him some sort of relief. A way to take a step forward instead of constantly feeling shame. The puppet believes his brother will forgive Michael, as a puppet already forgave him. It's a bittersweet moment. The FNAF series has expressed the story in its own little way, and especially in the beginning entries, mostly doing this within phone calls, newspapers, and the minigames. What I wish it did was flesh out the characters in much more detail. We know the motives of the puppet of why they do what they do, but it feels as though in those five nights, not including the extra nights and the custom nights, the story is very limited to how much it could present. Admittedly, I did heavily enjoy it, and I still do to this day. However, it was still limited due to the constraints of Five Nights. That's why I love fan recreations of the story since in the beginning, although simplistic, could be heavily expanded on through fan media. Not just animations, but even fan games such as The Return to Bloody Nights, which was a prequel to everything, taking place in Fazbear's Diner giving phenomenal voice acting to really humanize and vilify William Afton, creating a much more compelling monster to what led up to his first murders. It didn't really do anything new to the story and just took what was already established, however, adding so much detail that it really felt like watching a movie play out for the very first time. Even here, not only do they add more detail to the story, but also express it in such a unique way. Even the music portrays this as in the beginning, this ambient static that causes you to feel creeped out, but once the puppet begins talking about a way to let Michael find forgiveness in others, the static fades, only to let peace settle in. It's kind of beautiful, horrifying, but beautiful. That's all I could really say about this part. But we didn't come here for beauty. We want to feel creeped out and scared. The next video is about the night guard training video at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The first part is how to function in camera systems, which is oddly using the iPad, so that kind of explains why a night guard would have limited power in this universe. The next part shows how to use doors. Section 2. Door Controls you might have noticed the two large doors to your sides, and also your lack of provided flashlight. But why is that? You will need to use a flashlight with these specially engineered door controls. Pressing the white button will activate the light set outside the door, illuminating a- This model is what I believe to be spring trap within this location. But let's continue forward. What possible dangers could this place have? The animatronics themselves, since they walk around and could damage equipment, which is why we even have these doors in the first place. The final section is simply called, I am here. Quote, The hidden room in the bathroom hallway. The boards. Break them. I'm there. I'm in there, Michael. Your father. I'm your father. I want to talk to you. I only want to see my boy. So William is obviously here and is trying to escape since he was locked up to rot. I'm sure we'll see him soon enough though. Facial recognition testing begins with Toy Bonnie, which shows how the criminal database actually works. Every time they say criminal or see one, they'll make a sound, but won't really care if the person is innocent. However... Criminal. Innocent. What's this doing here? The hell? Hey, hey, no, 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 no! <laughs> Look, I know we can't have that guy back here, but you can't just put him without telling me! I could have died! I. God damn it, you know what? How about you take your facial recognition and shove it? Cause I'm not working in this death trap anymore, starting right now! So I think that's a puppet in the corner that's slowly appearing, but thankfully, they had a taser to stop Bonnie. Being justifiably mad and just quitting on the spot. Oh look, it's William. Oh look, it's the purple guy. This tape was pretty straightforward as the animatronics are at this point being controlled by the puppet in order to further the plan of getting revenge on William. Not the Afton family as a whole as they understand that his children 
have nothing to do with their deaths, and even ask Michael for help. The next tape is simply called Security Footage, which appears to be from the first game's location. Bonnie and Chica appear to have a conversation. Hey Lucas, appearing to be Bonnie's name. Do you think it'll be him this time? Most likely looking for William in order to move on. With Bonnie being pessimistic thinking he might already be gone. Wherever he is, I hope he's sorry for what he did to you. Bonnie doesn't believe that he'll ever feel sorry for anyone. This is something that's depressing to read. Bonnie, you were a good brother, with him beginning to cry. Chica then saying, you're sad now, but one day you won't be. We'll go to heaven, because we're supposed to. With Bonnie responding, I'm glad you don't know what's really happening. This was the most depressing and heartbreaking thing I have ever seen that was FNAF related. It was short, simple, but so powerful. A conversation between two children, one that is really young, trying to stay positive, most likely just being naive to the real world even after being Afton. With the other most likely being a lot older, though they are still probably just a child as well, or even just a younger teenager, with the way they see things in a much harsher light. There are so many different ways to interpret this one scene. Bonnie feeling as if they failed Chica as an older brother, unable to do anything to help her escape this place at all. Chica is still probably too innocent to even fully grasp her situation. Bonnie understands that William is someone that is unable to feel remorse for his action but doesn't want to hurt Chica, presumably their younger sister, since they try to be more mature and protect them from the truth. That Bonnie, at this point, most likely believing that they won't ever have their souls released from their metal prisons. Simple interactions such as this are what make this series so well developed. A simple premise, making the animatronics talk to each other, but crafted in a way that is believable due to her lines being what a child might say to a teenager. What's even worse is Bonnie fully understands her situation. Chica is saying that after all this is over, we will finally be able to go to heaven like we're supposed to. Like I said, Bonnie probably believes that they will be like this forever, but do you not read what they were saying to each other beforehand? Do you think it'll be him this time? They are probably killing off night guards just praying it's William since it's been established that they may not know how William even looks like. Since it has been told to us that he did use a springlock suit in order to lure children away, so they probably never even caught a glimpse of his real face, which is why they are just killing off random night guards, just hoping it's him. Although Chica may not fully understand how severe their actions are, her older brother does. If they do somehow find William, end him, and seemingly move on, are they really going to be granted heaven? After everything they did, yes, they're children who unfortunately were at the wrong place at the wrong time, but murder is still murder. Bonnie realized this, but is letting Chica stay ignorant, hoping with her ignorance she most likely has a better chance to move on peacefully. This perfectly portrays how under these suits are just children who are scared. Children that are confused, they have no real hate in their heart, just confusion. We'll go to heaven, because we're supposed to Lucas. We'll go to heaven, because we're supposed to. The company PSA is the next tape replacing the Springlock suits, unable to be worn due to some incident, with the new animatronics being the ones from the original game. After the restaurant opens back up, some of our returning patrons might be confused about these changes. Where did Fredbear and Spring Bonnie go? Who are these new characters? In a situation where you are asked anything along these lines, here is what you say in reply. Fredbear does not exist. Spring Bonnie does not exist. Nothing happened to anyone. He does not exist. Yeah, so Fredbear and Golden Freddy seem to be the same exact character within his universe, with Golden Freddy seemingly trying to talk to William, saying that they want to take William with them so they know the feeling of not existing. I'm not exactly sure what is trying to be fully portrayed here, 
So let's move on to cartoon to be called Animated Cartoon, which was an absolute gem. <laughs> That's a wrap, everybody. About time! I've been getting tired of these kids treating our fine eatery like a food fight ring. What's so bad about food fights? Oh, I like them. I don't know. Clean it up and find out. Oh, come on. How about everyone quit bickering and I'll make us some pizza instead? I... I could do that. Sounds good to me. If I haven't fallen asleep by the time it's done, then sure. Shut up and do what I pay you for. It seems that the table with six chairs confuses Chica since there's only four of them, which is when she goes to the back room and finds this photo, with the blacked out version of Fredbear and Spring Bonnie, the two animatronics that this company is trying to hide away. So then, Chica just... <laughs> yeah, then Fredbear pops up in a field of flowers. <laughs> like, what is going on? I couldn't tell you because I am so confused from this fever dream. To Charlie, you're wrong. You know you are. My brother is a monster. He killed me. He's the reason my head is missing parts. And then everyone pretended it never happened. Like, I don't exist. What makes you think he'd be any different now? Stop saying that he'll save us. It isn't true. All you're doing is hurting us more. To the animatronics, I'm sorry. I don't care if you hate me for saying it, but there's really no way out. We're going to be here forever. I've accepted it. Can't you accept it too? Please. I don't want to be alone. Previously, we probably would have just accepted that the crying child from FNAF 4 would have just forgave Michael, like the puppet said, without really knowing his position about the situation. He doesn't believe that they will be saved at all. My brother is the reason my head is missing parts only to have his whole existence basically forgotten. Forced to be forgotten since the company is trying to actively cover up what happened in order to move forward with a new name. That kind of thing is horrifying. We don't actually know if the crying child passed away after the incident in FNAF 4 since it was never explicitly stated, but here, it seems it did, in this universe at least. The last line he says about not wanting to be alone could mean two things. Remember, they are just a child, so they have childish views on things and being alone is terrifying for anyone, much less a young kid. If William Afton does pass away in front of the crying child, but he still hasn't forgiven his brother, does that mean he still has to stay in a suit due to the grudge? Either that, or every time the animatronics go hunting, they leave the crying child alone since the Golden Freddy suit doesn't have an endoskeleton similar to the other animatronics since it was just a springlock suit that most likely had its inner parts completely removed in order to be worn. There are only two parts left within the series, which I'll be leaving for you all to review for yourselves. The voice acting was some of the best I've ever heard, not in just FNAF, but in every single media. Within the memories and finale episodes, it wraps things off in quite a fitting and straightforward way, deserved for a series as dark as this. With this line, My doll, don't leave me here! <laughs> my doll, my doll, help me! being made at 2 minutes and 41 seconds within the finale on November 12th, 1993. A lot of times when a series ends, I'm left with certain emotions that are generally negative since I feel as though creating a fitting ending to a great series can be extremely daunting at times, especially for a series as well loved, praised, and viewed such as this. With so many high expectations of what exactly the creator could have done, I am generally glad that I was able to be surprised by the sheer consistent quality presented. So this most likely would have been one of, if not the most viewed FNAF VHS horror series on YouTube. <laughs> if not for this one weirdo calling himself Baddington. <laughs> the 
The start of the FNAF style videos would be in a playlist appropriately titled the FNAF related tapes. Although Squimpus did release a video as early as 6 years ago, Baddington's FNAF series didn't start until around 3 years ago. But before we even get to this amazing series, let's go back in time to when they posted their first video on November 14th, 2015. And I... <laughs> I don't... I don't know. It's an actual real life video, not an animation, of the creator in a Golden Freddy cosplay suit, which admittedly looked generally pretty well designed, while playing a song that was extremely popular for being a meme during that time period. I have no idea why, but it seems like they were having fun and were probably really young during this, so who cares? Let them live their life. Now, a lot of Baddington's earlier works seem to not have gained any traction at all, and weirdly enough, were all live action. Now, I'm not going to comment on the quality nor the story going on since it was made 6 years ago and seemed to be just a teenager who was trying to express themselves in a unique way. Honestly, good for him for having the confidence to keep these up after getting such a large fan base of 600,000 subscribers. FNAF was definitely something they were into since not only was their first video about FNAF, but they also did upload multiple FNAF videos, I believe to start becoming a FNAF or horror game YouTuber even adding their own skits into the gameplay. Baddington do this, Baddington do that, Baddington you didn't finish this, <sighs> Okay. Okay. Game plan, I'm just gonna play all the games today and then wait for the game to come out Friday. <laughs> Easy game plan, this will give me like a couple subscribers out of Some of you might be viewing this as weird, but I kind of enjoyed this video style of adding their own mini skit before every single gameplay. Tell me one other gameplay channel that adds live action skits before the video. I kind of wish they uploaded more of these kinds of videos since they were entertaining to me. Fast token, fast token. Oh, Dude, is there like a, like a, a thingy I can do? A... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Arr, so much more spacious in here. I may stay a while. Oh! Foxy has a voice? Like most of their earlier works, these videos wouldn't gain much traction at all, only amassing a couple of thousand views. But he was definitely dedicated, since they kept pumping out more and more videos and even started to learn how to make animations around 4 years ago. Or at least, this is the point where I assume they started to work since this is the first time any animation related content would be shown. Oh, hello dad boy. Truly a work of art. Generally better than anything I can make though. Once again, even more live action films would be made, but not much views would be gained around their time until this single animation. December 21st, 2019. The first real animation that Bennington has made blew up, gaining around 500,000 views. It was also the first real VHS lost tape video they created, which I believe really suited their style. Let me just say, this was earlier in the career of his art design, so the models weren't that well crafted. However, with the grainy looks of the VHS tape and obscure location, this actually looked quite well designed. As an early project, this was honestly pretty amazing. After this, some more blender speed modeling would show up getting even more views, along with the much more gameplay videos. I didn't click showtime. Friday, Friday. 
Push the button to continue. Wait. Please, if you're watching this, Bennington, please make more of these videos. We even get the best series on his channel, the Bennington Quest Line. What's the first thing on the agenda? Wait, I wanna like... Okay, so... A series with his girlfriend at that time. I'm not sure about the current relationship, but the interaction between these two seemed quite wholesome. The best part about this video is the fact that it appeared to be both extremely professionally made, <laughs> but at the same time, really poorly made. Don't get me wrong, I don't make gameplay videos for a reason. I don't have a personality and need a script to sound even remotely enjoyable. But the fact that you've seen this amazing intro and then the window tap along with the explosive editing was just so weird and I honestly loved every single second of it for some reason. I literally watched every single episode. It's my new hyperfixation. Now, we get to the second VHS animation which has gained 1 million views. March 23rd, 2020. Henry.mp4 would be released. So, what the hell? Like, genuinely. <laughs> the reason why I kept mentioning the live action skits in the gameplay video wasn't just done randomly. It was to express how weird I found this channel. We get skits into this amazing VHS animation to random Minecraft videos then this? It's obvious that throughout the years, he's been working very hard on trying to find out what could cause people to feel uneasy. It does such a perfect job at making you stare at seamlessly nothing, which is static only to get... jump scared. Do you not all see what I'm talking about here? I wish this was photoshopped because my head for some reason can't fathom this. We have Minecraft videos next to one of the creepiest videos I've ever seen on YouTube. It makes absolutely no sense to me, but I love it. I adore it even. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if these VHS videos got popular when they were released or gained views after the FNAF tapes. But either way, the quality that showed early on was quite surprising. There's passion between every single video. It doesn't matter if it's gameplay, skits, or animation. He wants it and he feels like he's having fun. At least that's a feeling I got from it. But this only gets better since on April 9th, 2020, Wake Up Bonzo would be uploaded. It seems that these videos had a pattern, make long stretches of silence only to surprise a viewer with a jump scare. I do have to admit, just creating cheap jump scares isn't that effective to me, and the quality isn't perfect, but I mean... That's from the same video by the way. It still seemed to have the approach to horror that did try to make itself scary with jump scares while creating a silent but creepy atmosphere. Not my thing like I said, but I could see the appeal. The reason why I'm not sure if these VHS tapes blew up before the FNAF tapes is due to the very next video being the 300 subscriber special, which was pretty wholesome honestly. Okay, yeah, I know, a little hairy. Jeez. Hi, I'm Baddington in case you already didn't know that. And this is my 300 subscriber special. 
basically, he has noticed, hey, my skits aren't growing my channel, but these animation and animation render videos are surprisingly taken off, so that's why I'll be focusing my attention from now on. I can respect that, since growing on the YouTube platform as a small creator can be extremely challenging, since the first step isn't always the easiest. I mean, for me, you guys probably see a channel that's only existed for a couple of months, but I did have multiple channels ranging for years talking about various different things, but thankfully, I have a growing community that I get to show off horror games to and how I feel about them. Just a quick thank you to all those who chose to stay and support the channel. I really love you all. After this, Paddington has seemed to stop with the skits and gameplay videos and decided to just focus on creating animations. Instead, not completely though. Since in the 300 subscriber video, they did talk about they're going to be less random and focus on the animations more, since that's what people enjoy the most. Though, a majority of the future uploads would be Minecraft videos here and there. Seriously though, these videos are absolute hidden gems. And most importantly, an abundance of animations focusing on analog horror style videos. These animations seem to actually have gained some virality since on November 13th, 2020, a 50,000 subscriber special would be uploaded, which would only get overshadowed by his 100,000 special just a few months later. Well, 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 the day has finally come. I have reached 100k subscribers on YouTube. But I've been on the platform for about five years, and through those five years, I've only managed to reach 100,000 last year. That was my biggest growth last year, is when I have made it big on YouTube by making an iconic web series of mine that sure was inspired heavily, yeah. But it succeeded. It got me to where I wanted to be and probably is gonna take me way farther. I can grow with this story in hand and I'm so happy for it. Harmony and Horror has been a huge key to success for me. I made Harmony and Horror and I'm excited about it. I'm gonna work on making it more original. Hey, hey, screw you, I'm making a video. This is definitely a big dream of mine. Thank you, Baddington, for never changing. The Harmony and Horror series really blew up this channel, with it starting with the already mentioned Henry video, then Wake Up Bonzo, along with a total of 24 episodes within it. I could try explaining every single video within this mini series, but this video would honestly get too long. I'm known to only make short form content videos, not three hour long video essays. So let's move on. March 1st, 2021. We finally make it to Baddington's first official FNAF-related VHS tape. This was the start of the FNAF-related content, gaining 5 million views and elevating his channel to the public eye. Obviously, with this being a FNAF-inspired VHS tape series, the description was probably needed since a lot of people would have probably jumped on the Oh no, this creator is completely ripping off the idea of VHS FNAF tapes from this other content creator. Quote, Okay, so I know what this looks like. This is just a fun project for now. I am not trying to replace or be better than Scrimpus McGrimpus. I simply want to try and recreate the tapes, but with my own spin on things. I hope you like the video. But anyways, let us start off by watching this 53 second clip. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Why are you hiding? Holy, the animation, voice design, sound quality, everything was absolutely 
perfect. Even the redesigns of the original animatronics were absolutely terrifying to fit a much more realistic standard since honestly, I feel like this thing actually looks like what a real animatronic is supposed to look like. Although this was a recreation of another person's work in their own art style, a lot of people did say that this was literally just a better version of the original series. Let me just state that visually and sound design wise, I believe Bannington did a much better job at making a series. However, with story direction, Squimpus takes the cake since it was beautifully crafted. So to sum up the first episode, it seems that someone is hiding from the animatronics for some reason. With the second video being called Fazbear Entertainment Video Manual, which second press the blue unlock button on the back of the head. It's essentially the exact same as the original that's inspired by. Oh, and Freddy looks a little bit spooky. Climb inside the torso and accept your. D joint movement test shows more of the characters with Bonnie's head looking a little wrong. I absolutely love the animation style of this series already. I really can't mention that enough. It seemed that we once again get to see all of Bonnie's joints testing out each limb to see if they're working properly. Things look pretty normal until the room gets dark and Bonnie disappears. Sound response check is honestly now one of my favorite animations I have ever seen. Jacob? It's time to go home, baby bird. Mommy? <laughs> it's time to go home. Home, home, home. <laughs> Take me home with you. No, Chica. Baby bird. No, Chica. You're scaring me. <laughs> Chica seems to have had an oopsie malfunction. The animatronics were known to get a little quirky at night. So for some reason, a loud sound, no idea what kind of child, I mean, what kind of thing would ever make a loud sound such as this, to have our audio system to be destroyed. Telling us that the animatronics seem to react to children, which giving her a test to see if they're looking in the right direction. This is when I believe we are watching William luring Chica when she was just a child to the back room, as she talks about how she likes birds since they're pretty. Once again, bringing up the idea of snow, Things can't breathe when they're in snow. I believe the original felt stronger for this section, but this one definitely does have its individual strengths. For one, the idea that we're instead following the girl to the room she goes to sleep on snow in was a pretty interesting take, especially with the way that they used the Bonnie mask to make her follow. The original was much more depressing, but this one was much more terrifying. 
really beautiful locations of how the girl seemed to light up the locations that she was in. Give Life is the next but only 30 second animation which was just a recreation of this short clip that was presented in an earlier video of the Squimpus tapes. Pirate Cove pre-show has a lot of personality and energy that was something that I loved with how uncanny the animatronics looked, as if they were really realistic with their goofy cartoonish voice acting. When I tell ya, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes! Wait, 10 minutes? That's right, 10 minutes! Can you bloody believe it? 10 minutes? Why, we better gather our gear before time runs out. Oh, and I've got to prep my singing voice. La 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 la! I would generally watch a show dedicated to this. The new Go 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 mini game recreation shows five children sitting around. I do enjoy how they make the episode repeat each time between the Go 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 sections, since that's how it was in a mini game. Each time, changing how the stage was going to look like, but here, each time a new cycle happens, a child would disappear. Bonnie, make yourself useful and mop the stage, will you? Just try not to slip, Cottontail. So the video also seems to have issues, but it's probably fine. With the third cycle, two kids are now missing. The audio this time is extremely distorted, and Freddy is definitely going through it. Ten minutes! Can you bloody believe it? I've got to prep my singing voice. La, 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 la. It seems every time a child goes missing, they appear within the suits. Now, this fourth cycle, all but one kid is missing, which is when. For your land lovers, Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. What's the matter, Foxy? I thought you wanted an audience. This was definitely a scarier version of the original since Quick thing, behind that door is Fredbear being held up by a rope, but this video isn't age restricted for some reason. However, in the original video, which is a lot less detailed and much darker, darker as in the lighting, that video is age restricted. I'm pretty sure this means Squimpus McGrimpus did it on purpose, but with YouTube's inconsistent age restriction policies, I'm not going to take the chance. So this is when I feel as though the series actually begins to get extremely good, as I believe this is really in the perspective of a child. Things are terrifying, especially William in his springlock suit. He isn't a real monster, he's just a weak man in a costume, but the children viewed him in a much more terrifying light, since he is the one who took their lives. I absolutely love this perspective. It's horror, but horror in the mind of a child. The next video is a short animation called There Are No Strings. <laughs> it's more to be creepy and I don't believe it holds that much lore significance. You might also be thinking that I'm going through these quite quickly. And in all honesty, I kinda am. Not intentionally, these are all gems and I genuinely loved every single one of them. The small twist it brings and the new visual designs, though story-wise, things didn't really change much. Since, like Bannington himself stated, he was just making a recreation of the original. I will now perform my people's native dance! Huh? 
However, non-existent video was where things start fleshing out into its own directional story. We open up to the mascot costume assembly tape. Fredbear and Bonnie Bon are essentially told to us that they are Springlock suits. These suits double as both animatronic suits and wearable costumes for performers. Cost efficient and eliminates any differences in appearance as to not break the immersion. The wearable costumes will only be used when an animatronic is in repair. Okay, remember when I said this is where things really start to pick up to be their own original piece? Yeah. We enter the point of view of someone in Fredbear, which is where we see William Afton in a corner. It seems that there is an endoskeleton crawling around during a fire, but I'm not sure if there's really a fire going on or if there's a fire alarm that was pulled so the guests would be evacuated in order to avoid them viewing the animatronics in a way that they could be deemed dangerous. This was a company that was shown to try to hide whole murders within their establishment, so this kind of thing isn't that unlikely. It was really cool to see the different layers of the animatronics being peeled off and showing how the people could enter inside. It's the amazing attention to detail that causes the series to elevate to something truly great. To remove the head before taking off the costume, simply remove the head as well as the fiberglass structure underneath. Then, peel off the fabric costume. Once removed, you'll need to detach the fiberglass shell from the exoskeleton. Lastly, remove the exoskeleton from the animatronic. To put on the suit, be sure not to press against the spring locks too much. Next, you'll need to reattach the fiberglass shell back on. Then, Put on the fabric layer. Once applied properly, put on the gloves and feet. Lastly, you'll need to put on the head, but before you do, you'll need to put the head into performer mode by winding up a small socket on the inside of the head to reveal the fake eyes. Perfect for, Perfect for you to see. It was heavily inspired by Scrimpus McGrimpus, but after this, it really started to become its own thing. We get a split section of Fredbear jaw upgrades showing up on screen. He was designed to have a larger jaw, so it was upgraded to have a lot more power in order to help it move to avoid issues since the additional weight did cause it to not function properly. Like I said, this kind of detail is amazing. We then get flashed to a child's face when their face is being squirted with ketchup signifying the crying child. We now get introduced to the four tapes found within the animatronic heads, which is when we're gifted with the final tape. This part is very similar to the original. Instead of being just a sound, it is much more animated to express how Springtrap was created. Once again, the puppet is trying to convince Michael to do the right thing. Help the animatronics to pass away peacefully. Although this part was very similar, this did achieve the same goal but in a much better way due to the higher quality animations and adding that little bit of detail to truly engage the readers. Well, folks, it's been a real pleasure having you here tonight. 
Late one night at Fredbear Fright seemed to be a short animation to show Spring Chop a little bit more, similar to the Give Life animation which just seemed to serve no significance to the lore other than to be just creepy. However, it absolutely nailed this. One of my favorite animations within the original Scrimpus McGrimpus tapes had to be security footage, which was a conversation between Bonnie and Chica. Unfortunately here, it seemed to replace all the heartbreaking moments with that tape to be filled with much more horror elements. It did make me jump, but I preferred wanting to cry during this part because of how Bonnie felt like they failed at being an older brother since they couldn't protect their own younger sister. Personal feelings aside, this was the last FNAF VHS tape uploaded on Baddington's channel. On January 1st, 2023, he'd upload a video simply called Where are the FNAF VHS tapes? Which is... Oh, oh. Oh, oops, 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 sorry about your stuff. You sick motherfucker, you sorry excuse for Scott Cawthon. Jesus Christ, what the hell do you want from me? Where are the FNAF VHS tapes, sir? <laughs> Please never change. It oddly becomes heartwarming for some reason as well. Listen, I get it. FNAF is good. FNAF is great in certain contexts, but isn't it time we just move on? Isn't it time we just move past it all and we just live a little? Move past everything. Let it die. We've let it live for too long. It was our childhood, but why can't it stay our childhood? We're the ones that made it what it is today. Scott Cawthon's gone. That was kind of about us, to be honest. The movie's gonna be coming out pretty soon. 
and the cycle is just going to continue over and over again. Summarizing this video, people loved this FNAF VHS tapes a lot and kept demanding more of them. However, things could get boring to make, he still loves FNAF and a VHS style horror, but wants to make other things again. Focusing too much on the animations and not really doing skits anymore, which is something he always enjoyed doing. Honestly, I am a little sad that the next FNAF VHS tape probably won't be made for a while. Maybe years, so who knows. But I had fun got scared and really did enjoy myself watching Bannington being himself as he made not only his recreations, but his other projects as well. <music> Found out only after writing the script, editing half this video and just fixing things around. I love controversy, but only dumb controversy. Like maybe two streamers hating each other because one of them called the other an idiot on stream or something. Something overly dramatic and stupid like that. What I don't enjoy is serious controversy since although many people on the internet have become desensitized to certain things, controversial incidents do affect real life people. This is probably going to be one of my most controversial take ever on this channel seconded only to me not enjoying JR's. Baddington made his tweet basically saying the creator of The Walton Files, another video creator of a wildly popular analog horror series, tragically passed away, with him creating a second tweet saying it was just a prank that showed that the creator was an inspiration to him and was just a joke due to how absent he's been in the community. This, however, caused him to gain so much backlash from many different people, with Squimpus McGrimpus himself also coming out to say, Hey, I don't think that was cool, so don't make any more remakes of my VHS tapes. Honestly, I don't think this tweet was that bad? Let me explain. Was it messed up? Yes, and I'm not saying it was a funny joke to make, but the bar that I hold for content creators, especially YouTubers, is so low after so many years. There is a whole joke within the FNAF community that Emil Mako of all people committed murder since they are probably one of the only few FNAF game developers who hasn't gone into heavy controversy. Jonochrome, JR's if we mention a certain fruit, Thef King, you get the point. Each having various different levels of severity when it comes to their controversies, and that's just the FNAF community. Shane Dawson, The King Nappy, Cookie Lol, Cryotic, Honestly, it's kind of crazy the amount of YouTubers that get accused of grooming their pets. Hint, it's code word for children. Not saying that all the names mentioned got accused of that, just that most did. It's so bad that honestly the bare minimum for me not to hate you at this point is just don't be racist and don't be a pet groomer. So do I think Bannington deserved a hate for the tweet? Not really. It was a messed up joke, but since the creator of Walton Files was so loved, that's why many of the fans of the series thought it was so bad. This happened around April 13th, 2022, and I'm just finding out that March 17th, 2023, a burner Twitter account accused Squimpus of confessing within a private Discord server that they gave not so safe for work art to someone they knew was underage for many, many years. But this person being a fan, how old were they? Scrimpus was 17, with his fan being only 14 at the start. Like I said, this happened for many years. Scrimpus continued when they were 20, while that fan was around 16. This turns worse when Scrimpus basically admits that everything was true and is going to be working on improving themselves. As you could probably guess, people were not that happy about that within the comment section. I do believe that there should be some element of separating the art from the artist since, let's be honest, most FNAF related content would basically be unrevealable at this point. I hate so many of the popular members within this community with a passion sometimes. How is Tyler, of all people, the creator of the Return to Freddy series, actually one of the only likable FNAF game developers at this point? His biggest sin is just being cringe as a teenager. That's all I need to describe Tyler, just cringe and I love him for that. The FNAF tapes are already completed, with the last video on this channel being 200k subs in the future. This was made two years ago, but I do hope that they never return. I did enjoy the tapes, however, any future plans that they have shouldn't come out. This will most likely be one of the rare moments that I will be talking about a situation since I do not like to bring up drama that isn't funny or dumb 
Though I do feel like it's necessary since although the series was well loved, well created, the person responsible for the series would end up being a disgusting individual. Back to Barrington. Ever since then, after Squimpus, this person who cannot do no wrong, tells him to stop recreating the series, he has changed the VHS tapes to move to a whole new direction. The first 8 videos are just basically recreations of the original Squimpus series that add some new elements here and there, but the last two seem to be moving in a completely different place. Though we still do not know where it's headed since the last video was uploaded December 20th, 2022. Thankfully, this seems to be still ongoing, though may take a lot of time until the next video. The rise of FNAF VHS tapes has been extremely quick, with many channels trying to take advantage of this trend with their own unique spin of this concept. Bizarre released this video one day before I started writing the script, and I fell in love with its graphics, designs, and especially its voice acting. Seeing as this isn't the first time the family restaurant has had a run with the law does leave the public wondering, will this be the final nail in the coffin for Fazbear Entertainment? This video would be called Retrieved, which perfectly summarizes this tape. It appears to be some sort of employee who finds a decaying animatronic, with this mechanic being very similar to Pizzeria Simulator. Holy shit. Is this thing supposed to be out here? Begin audio prompt in 3, 2, 1. Of course, things can't always stay safe in Freddy's Pizzeria. The audio was... Holy... For fuck's sake, come on! Come back here! Oh, hey there! This channel only has around 14,000 subscribers and has been making these kinds of videos for a very long time, but they all look extremely well made. Giraffe Lord seemed to have started making a whole new series that is tied together, only having 4,000 subscribers. I love how the bigger series have inspired many smaller creators to make their own VHS tapes that have their own take of what should have happened. Fuck this shop. What the hell? The most popular of these newer tapes has to be from Spectre, who has 90,000 subscribers, with their tape having millions of views as well. These are all creators that I want to make videos about, with their lore and what could be going on since they are all amazingly designed, with Spectre series being the most well put together and probably the best in my own personal opinion. You should really check out these series when you can, and I'll be leaving a link to the channels down in the description. That's all I really have to talk about, how the FNAF tapes started with their own incredible rise and new dominance within the FNAF animation genre. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Comment down below what's your favorite FNAF VHS tape series, or just your favorite FNAF animation of all time. In the meantime, I've been talking for so long, so I'm going to go take a nap. Peace. A quick thank you to Ori. RYJBR03, Samuel Butanes, Kingly, Krev, Detective Wolf, X Fled, Nightmare, Brian Strix, Athena, Raton, and Duck. Thank you all for supporting the channel by becoming members.